Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King 2 and today I'm going to be giving you part 10 of what if Naruto was banished and got a supernatural ability. Remember to get this on the 300 like as usual, share this to all of your friends in your social media platform and also stay in tune because after this I'm going to be posting a new episode of what if Naruto is a deceitful god. So stay in tune for that and over on Anime King I'm going to be posting a brand new episode of what if Naruto was the Osusuke king so stay tuned for that as well guys and later on over anime king I'm gonna be posting what if Naruto is a badass genius so stay tuned for that as well and remember if you're new and this is the first time hearing my voice and you enjoy the videos on both anime king and anime king too go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the anime king family and thank you for all for your help and support and yeah without further ado what do you say we begin this new episode start the intro So, the last time we left off, Naruto, along with the Kumo ninjas, faced off against the bandits and tried to take over the town, as the group was just too much for the bandits, as they dealt with all of them. After it was over, the people of the village started to clap, as they started to thank their new saviors for helping them out, as Naruto, along with Yujito, as she was playing the instrument as well, as Naruto plays banjo. As they had a hit off as everyone arrived and they drink and celebrate for the little town being saved. Later that night, Naruto was in the girl's room as Amoy and Killer B was sleeping with a clone of Naruto on there. As Samoy, shoulder was still hurting her, so Naruto gave her a massage. Seeing how she was reacting, the other girls wanted a massage as well, so Naruto summoned two clones and started to massage them as well. As things escalated really quickly and the three of them started to make out with the three clones but they didn't push things farther than that as they just met after all so Naruto left back to go back to his room the next morning he said goodbye to the Kumo ninjas and told them to take care of themselves as with that he headed off Naruto then went towards the rice country where Orochimaru once ruled over but after Naruto hunting him and destroying his bases he left as Naruto broke a lot of people out of here out of slavery you also have members on the Iberi clan which are to help them and their bodies are stabilized because of the seal because they used to burst into smoke and a lot of them are grateful for him here. As Naruto met up with two other girls there and they can't believe he was here as Naruto spent the night with them. As he was sleeping Naruto had a premonition again but this time was off Itachi in the town as Naruto went out in the forest to see Itachi. Itachi after seeing Naruto arrive at Gara aid to find out what is going on and after what Deidara told him as Naruto was surprised that Deidara is still alive but Deidara switched himself with a clone it actually figured that Naruto had some psychic ability or something so he wanted to see if his premonition would work and yes it worked it actually told Naruto that he's an ally of Konoha the reason he killed his own clan was because Uchiha clan was planning a revolt on Konoha as Naruto couldn't believe what he was hearing as it actually told him everything that happened Itachi told him to watch himself as well because soon enough the Akatsuki members are coming after him again. And with that he went off leaving Naruto as Naruto was thinking hard. After leaving the rice country Naruto decided to head to one of the populous hot springs as he heard about it but it was snowy there as Naruto treachered through the snow. Arriving there Naruto finally relieved a breath as he still had what Itachi said in his mind but he then felt two arms wrapped around his eyes. As he felt something poking in the back. As he wondered whose girl is this, he then turned it was Shizuka. As she and Tokyo was here. After getting a room, Nerd decided to join them in the bath. So yeah guys, that was basically last how we left off. You guys can switch across the place and check it out for yourself. So let's start this new episode. Naruto and Tokyo and Shizuka was in the bath. So, how has things been going? asked Shizuka. Well, I've had some bad exploits of late. How so? said Tokyo. You know I told you two about the Akatsuki organization, he asked. As they nodded. Well, they're already on the move. They're on the move, Shizuka asked. 
Yes, one of my friends and fellow Jinjulki Gara. The San Kazakage was abducted by them. They successfully extracted the Biju inside of him and he died. Oh dear, Tokiwa said. I'm sorry, Naruto, said Chizuka. Don't worry about it, Naruto said. One of the elders of the San was special revival Dutsu and brought him back by exchanging her life for his. Gar was revived but the elder died and said, We had a ceremony in her honor and for her sacrifice. And what of the Akaski members? Tokiwa asked. Well, my former teammates Kakashi and Sakura took down one of them. I thought I took down one as well but he pulled a fast one on me, making me think that he blew up himself. Now he's still out there with the other members, said Naruto with a frustrating sigh. And now they have one of the Biju Naruto said. If they collect all nine, the ninja line will be in turmoil. Shizuka walked over, she placed her hand on his shoulder. I know that it's a thank you Naruto but remember, failure only lead to better success the next time. Yeah, I know that. That is why when they strike again, I'll be ready. In fact, I already know who their next target is Naruto said. And who is that Tokyo asks? Yujito. She's a Kumo ninja. The two looked at him, how do you know that Shizuka asked. I met her a while ago, along with the 8 heels in Juliki, another one from Kumo. I see, Shizuka said. I warned them to be wary of members of the organization, and they took my word for it. I'm surprised that the Kumo shinobis didn't try to act duck you themselves. After all, some of the larger nations have a fine way to build up their military power through any means, Tokiwa said. Maybe, but those guys that I met up with, they were rather cool. Tokiwa then stood up, I think I'm gonna get out before I get dizzy. Will you be alright, Lazy Shizuka? Of course, Tokiwa. Go on and get some rest. Will you both be alright, Tokiwa said again. Don't worry, Tokiwa. I'll make sure Shizuka is safe, Naruto said. Tokiwa nodded. As Shizuka relaxed, as she looked up at the night sky as there was a glass frame there. Isn't it beautiful, she said. Sure is, Naruto said. But I know something even more beautiful. Oh, what is, she asked. You, of course, Naruto said. As he leaned forward and planted a gentle kiss on her lips, which she quickly returned. As the both of them break apart, you know it's only been 4 months, Shizuka said, and you seem rather giddy. From what I can tell, she said as she looked down in the water. It's been a long 4 months, Nurse said, and I've missed you a lot. Meanwhile, outside of the inn, 3. Son Shinobi, as they were wearing white, as they were lying down in the snow, they were wearing thick suits that protect their body well. That's a place one of them said, as he was looking through a telescope. Yes, Kagari, that is where he is, the second one said. The third to turn on and ask, well, Aburo, what do we do? We will try tomorrow, Mubi. Remember, we're on the job, and our employer is paying us very handsomely to exterminate him, said Aburo. And it's a special bonus since we're finally getting even with that kid who humiliated us in that blasted forest, Kagari said. Now come on, Aburo said, let's find shelter. Meanwhile, in a carriage, there was Shizuka's stalker, Kokuya. Yes, princess. Soon enough you shall be mine, he said, as he was hunting her down. The next morning, both Naruto and Shizuka was walking around. As Shizuka told Tokiwa, it will be fine, she and Naruto just gonna take a walk. So Tokiwa stayed behind. What a good day for a walk, Shizuka said, as the place was cool and nice. Yeah, I actually prefer this over the sand desert, Naruto said, as the both of them chuckled. Watching them from a camouflage blend to the snow was a rain trio. There they go, Kagari said. As the group then head out, Naruto and Shizuka then stop at a near mountain side as they looked over. Wow, it is surely beautiful, she said. Yeah, it is, Naruto said. Naruto, where do you plan to go next after you visit the hot springs? Asked Shizuka. Not sure. Maybe I'll head back to my hideout and rest for a while. I'd like to see your hideout, Shizuka said. Well, it's still not that much, Naruto said. But give it some years and I'll turn it in my new nation and home. And I will start to make an alliance with you, said Saizuka. Naruto smirked as he glanced over at her, as he tucked her into the snow. As the boat of them fell down on the blanket of snow. Naruto, what are you? Having fun, of course, he said, as the boat of them rolled around. Unaware of that, the rain trio was watching them. Now, Abro said, as Mubi then jumped up with the rest of them, as they released a barrage of shurikens. Naruto, look out, Saizuka said, as she pushed them out of the way and rolled away to avoid the attack. What the hell, Naruto said, as he picked up himself to see what at them. You three. Surprise, surprise, Kagari said. Do you know them, Naruto? Shizuka asked. Yeah, I had an encounter with them three years ago, in the tuning exams, and also on a mission in the land of tea. You got lucky all those times because you had your team to bail you out. But this time, they're not here to save you, Obro said. Save me? 
why would I need someone to save me from the likes of you, Nerta said. Because this time the odds are in her favor, Kagari said. Shizuka frowned, you three obviously don't know who you're dealing with. Does it even matter? Abro said. Yes, because you three are out of your league with me. And you're also looking at one of the toughest Konoichi in our generation, Princess Shizuka. Princess? Mubi asked, as they all looked at the girl. It doesn't matter, said Kagari, as they all perform their haze clone technique. As many clones surrounded Naruto and Shizuka, they can summon clones like you do, Naruto? Shizuka asked. Hardly. These are only illusions, but the three are hidden amongst them, and they can attack you from behind, Naruto said. Any way to identify the real ones? Shizuka asked. Only one way, Naruto said. Attack, said Mubi as a clone charge, as the three hid in the group, waiting for the right moment. Naruto simply waved his arm, as all of them were blown away, including the real one, as they came on a stop on the ground. What the hell did these us do? Oboro said, as he picked up himself. It's like he used some kind of wind jutsu on us. It doesn't matter, Oboro said. Get him, as he dashed towards Naruto. Naruto pointed his finger towards Oboro like a gun, as he then fired. As a psychic force slammed into Oboro's arm, he screamed out in pain and agony. Get the girl, Mubi said, as him and Kagura went to attack Shizuka. But they were surely mistaken if they thought she was weak, as she blocked the both of them strike and deliver a roundhouse kick to the both of them, send them flying away. Still confident that you can take us on, said Naruto. Princess, a voice cried out, as they saw the horse puppet approach, with Kogia popping out of it. I have come for you, I have come for us to get married. As Naruto and Shizuka were shocked to see him here. Who is this, Kagura said. Someone who can't take a hint, Naruto said. You again, Kokyo asked. Must you stand in the way of me getting to my bride? I am not your bride, Kokia, said Shizuka. I am Naruto's bride, she said. So why don't you take your puppet slaves and go on back to where you came from, said Naruto. What the hell is going on, Abro said after getting up. I don't know, but it looks like we got into another affair. Mubi answered. Well, he's no way, Kaguya said, as he went to attack Kogia. I think not, Kogia said, as he unleashed one of his robot-like puppets who attacked Kaguya. Puppets? Mubi asked. I am warning you, range nobis, do not get in my way. Or I will use you as my own puppets, said Kokia. As Naruto then looked up to see the sky darkening, as everyone turned to see the snowstorm coming in. Naruto, if we stay out here, we will get lost. Shizuka said, Come on, Naruto said, as he wrapped his arms around our waist and flew off, escaping the group. They're getting away. After them, Kaguya said, but you will stop by Mubi. Are you nuts? You will never find them in all that snow. So what do we do, Aburo said. We will have to find shelter and trap them later said Mubi, as he then turned to Kokuyo. Hey old man, my name is Kokuyo. Whatever. How would you like to help us crush the red head, Mubi asked. What's in for me, Kokuyo asked curiously. In turn, we help you get that princess. Kokuyo smiled. You got yourself a deal, boys, he said. Good, but let's find shelter before we lost out here and freeze to death. Meanwhile, I can't see anything, Shizuka said, as she shielded her eyes from the incoming snow. Naruto looked, Shizuka said, as Naruto saw a cave up ahead, as he fly towards it. Meanwhile, at the inn, Kiriko and Tokiwa watch the snowstorm pick up. They should be back by now. Tokiwa said, There is no way they can make it out through that storm, said Kiriko. Tokiwa looked outside. Shizuka, Naruto, please be safe, she said. Back with Naruto and Shizuka, they were in the far end of the cave. What do we do now, she said. We're lost, and it's freezing in here, and also I'm hungry, she said. Not to warn her to say I'm prepared. As he pulled out a summoning scroll and unsealed some firewood. As Naruto used a fire due to the light, the campfire. Soon enough they had a campfire burning in front of them brightly. I know these aren't much, but this is what I have in me, Naruto said. As he unsealed two big ramen cups from another seal. It's good enough, she said, as Naruto started to coat the both of them over the fire. When they were heated up, the both of them started to eat. Delicious, Naruto said. Doesn't it worry you though, said Shizuka. Being caught up in a snowstorm, stuck in a cave, while we have enemies out there. While I do feel edgy, I can't let that distract me. After all, they can't find us in this storm. That's just like you, Naruto. Never showing fear in the face of danger, she said. After their meal was over, Naruto wrapped her up in a tight hug to keep her warm. Hours later, they started to hear birds coming from outside the cave. Shizuka listened, Naruto said. It seems like the storm is over, she said. As they started digging through the snow wall. Wait, Naruto said. Do you hear that? The snow wall then exploded, sending both of them flying back. There you are, Kagari said. We knew that we would find you here. 
in a place like this. Aburo said, Naruto Nardi's eyes, why are the four of you together? Oh, we have a little arrangement. Miyubi said, Yes, I will deliver you to them. And I get the princess, Kokyo said. Classic bad guy team up, Naruto said. We got you trapped in here. As Naruto smirked, well, if you look at it away, I got you trapped. As he went through Hansen and slammed his hand on the ground, toad mouth binding, he said, as the cave wall started to shift and turn into a fleshy substance. What the hell is this? Kagari said, as his feet started to sink into it, and his hands started to get stuck to the wall. Shizuka don't move, Naruto said, as she stood beside him. Naruto then waved his hand as all four of them were pushed into the wall more, as they were currently inside a toad's stomach. As the puppet tried to break his way out of it, Naruto simply raised his hand and lifted the puppet off the ground and crushed it into pieces. Naruto, where are we? Shizuka asked. Oh, we're currently inside a toad's stomach, Naruto said, as she looked around. But she just stayed close to Naruto. Kokia, I know why you're here. But you three, who sent you after me, Naruto asked. We're not telling you anything, Aburo said. Alright then, you decide to make it difficult. As Naruto walked up to Aburo and went through hand sign, frog, transformation technique, as he slammed his hand on Aburo's forehead. As the group watched in shock as there was a poof. Aburo! Both of them cried out as Aburo turned into a toad. You failed to cooperate so I gave you a taste of what happens when you don't listen to me. Now then who's next? It's Orochimaru. A guy called Orochimaru. He was the one. He was the one that hired us. Kagura said. Orochimaru, huh? Naruto said. Yes, he wanted to track you down and bring him your corpse. Said Kagura. Continue to spill in the beans. Where are you meeting him at? Naruto asked. We would rather die. Miyubi said. Alright then, your call, Naruto said. As Naruto turned Miyubi into a frog as well. We're supposed to meet him at the Tenshi Bridge. In the land of grass. In three days. Don't do that to me, please, said Kagura. Now was that so hard, Nerta said. So, does this mean you let me go? Asked Kagura. Not just yet, Nerta said. I still might have use for you on your team. But, for now. As he turned Kagura into a frog as well. As he levitated all three of them up. Naruto, wasn't that a little too much? Shizuka asked. Don't worry, I can reverse that any time, but for now I'll keep them like this, Nerta said. As he then turned to Kokyo. As for you, clearly you cannot take a hint when someone say no. Hey Shizuka, you ever wanted a pet? As Naruto turned Kokyo into a frog. I do now, she said. Alright, I better stash these three somewhere else, Naruto said. As he summoned Gamakichi. Naruto, wha why are you calling me in this snowy place, Gamakichi asked, as he shivered a bit. Sorry for the inconvenience, Gamakichi, but I need you and the others on the mountain to keep these three in contain. Who are they, Gamakichi asked. Three, rain ninjas who were sent by Orchmar to kill me. But I might need further information from them. And when you have the chance... Tell Geezer C to send a message to Erosenin, then to find another lead on Urchimaru, and I'll give you all the candy I can give you. Till your stomach is packed. You mean that? He asked. Cross my heart, Nerta said. Alright, said Deal, he said, as he wrapped his tongue around the other toads and poofed away. Alright, Shizuka, let's go. Let's go hop to Nerta's back as the both of them headed off. Time skip. After saying his goodbyes, Nerta arrived at the bridge. As he looked at the bridge title, the Tenchi Bridge. So this is where they're going to beat Urchimaru. Well, I still got two days to prepare for this. And I better make up a good plan if I'm going to take him down this time. That's assuming he's even going to show up, Kurama said. I know, Kurama. For all we know, he could end up sending Kabuto in his place. Or someone else. If that occurs, I will have to force them to take me to him. Personally. And let's hope this time it isn't someone pretending to be him. Like the incident with the Fuma clan. You and me, Boatner, to said. As Nerta headed to the nearby town, as he decided to get a drink as he went inside the bar. Most of the people were already drunk so he didn't pay them any attention. As an 18 year old cutie walked up to him in a waitress dress with chestnut brown hair and blue eyes and an 87 centimeter bus. As Nerta cursed himself, nowadays that is the first thing he noticed. What will it be sir? She asked. I'll take a stiff drink Nerta said as he looked at the waitress tag. Seiko. Coming right up, she says she went to get Nerta drink. He then heard something behind him. And that's when I was surrounded by hundreds of them. Hundreds and their leader. But I fought bravely and I took out all of them, including their leader, saving the entire town. Is that so? A young woman voice said. How brave, another woman voice said. 
As the man chuckled, as near to turn it was Jerea, as the waitress came over this check, as he was surrounded by two girls. Here's your check, sir. That won't be necessary, Jerry turned, as he smiled to see Naruto. This one's on me, Naruto says, he placed some money on the table. Hey old man, Naruto, well ain't it that small world, Jerry I said that chuckle. As the two girls then got up, thinking that he wanted to be alone, speaking to his new friend. Hey, don't go, Jerry I said as he cried in sorrow. Sorry about that, Naruto said as he took a seat. They be back, said Jerry. So, fancy meeting you here. I find that unlikely, Naruto said. You and Bachan did get a message from Geezer Sage, right? Well, we did, so I figured you would be here, so I rushed as fast as I could. Then I take it you want in on this as well, Nerta said. I do, Jerry said. As Seiko came over, Nerta drink as she placed it down. Listen, Seiko, are you... 5 o'clock, she said. That is where my shift ends. As she winked and walked off. Kid, you never seem to amaze me, said Jerry. Huh, it seems like I got the charm, Nerta said. As he took a sip of his drink. So I take you made a plan before actually coming here, Jerry asked, hopefully. That I do, but it requires a three. Rain Shinobi had captured. I see. Well, we will discuss this elsewhere. By the way, I heard what happened in the sand. Oh, you did, Nerta said. Now you see even more where the Akatsuki are capable of, said Jarea. I know, Nerta said. Well, I hope you know what you're doing, seeing that the Akatsuki has already started their move. Gar was looked at Elder Cho, knew a technique gave him life again. But if you get caught, you won't be so lucky, Jarea said. You have all the right to say that, Nerta said, and I don't want to sound too cocky. But with Kurama's chakra, my chakra and my power, I stand a far better chance against the Akatsuki than I did in the past, Nerta said. I do understand that, just remember, you don't have to carry this burden alone. Whenever you need me, don't hesitate to write. That is after all why you had, the elder told, give me that message, right? Guilty, Nerta said. After finishing his drink, Nerta gave Seiko the payment and also tip, a very generous tip, in her back pocket, brushing his arm slowly down against her firm buttocks. I just watch that maze. A student has turned into a god when it comes to the ladies. So, since you're not gonna meet up with her until later, how about we go somewhere else and talk about the plan, Jerry said. Alright, Nerta said as he left the bar. Later at 5, nice to see you waited. As Seiko turned, well I didn't have much to do after work, so I decided to take you up on whatever you have planned, she said. Well come with me, sweetheart, and I'll show you how to have a good time, Nerta said. After having a wonderful dinner and a moonlight walk, Nerta brought Seiko back to the inn he was staying at, as he was currently playing her the banjo. When Nerta finished, she started to applaud, with a bright smile on her face. That was wonderful, Nerta, she said. Thanks, Nerta said. I had some practice doing this. She then made her way over to him, as she pressed her head on his shoulder. I had a really good night tonight, Nerta. Well, I had a good time with you as well, Nerta said. Truthfully, I haven't had so much fun like I did tonight in years, she said. Seriously, Nerta said. Yeah, most of the dates I've been on, they were guys who yap on about what kind of big shot they were and never asked me anything about me. But you're, you're different. You're so kind. You're gentle. You're wonderful, she said. Where have you been all my life, she thought. It seems like you must have been falling for the wrong guys, Nerta said. No offense. None taken, she said. But tonight was better with you than any other night I had with a guy. So please let me express my gratitude to you a bit more, she said. As she captures lips in a kiss, as his hands start to roam over her body, making her moan out. As she then took off her shirt, showing her black bra. Please be my first, she said. Really? As instincts kicked in into Naruto, as he stopped. What's wrong, she asks. I'm sorry, I just really don't have sex with girls. When I just met them, he said. And personally, you shouldn't have sex with man you just met. It should be with someone who is special. As she looked at him and saw how sincere he was. You're right, she said. Then how about we get to know each other a little more? That is if you're sticking around longer after tonight. Actually, I'm sticking around a bit. But the day after tomorrow, I'm going to be busy with something. How busy, she asked. Top secret busy, he said. And probably I won't even come back alive. What? She said. Yeah, there's a chance I might get captured or killed. As Nerd was piling on the drama. Trying to get a rise out of a girl. Through drama, said Grandma. What won't you try next? But if you really want to nerd said, ignoring Kurama, I can use whatever time I have to know you better. So if I do die, I can tell the boys upstairs, I got to meet a wonderful woman. It's a date, she said, but for now, can we continue? Sure, nerd said, as he continued to make out with her. The time then fly past as Naruto explained his plan to Jiraiya, as the three rain ninjas were transformed back into humans, as Naruto did something to them, 
Are you sure this is going to work? Abro asks. Don't worry, it will, said Mubi, as they were on the bridge. As Mubi had a bag in his hand, look, Kagura said, as he saw two figures approaching, with their hoods up. Let's go, Mubi said, as they stepped onto the bridge and met the two strangers halfway. As they saw it was Urchimar and Kabuto, Lord Urchimar, they said, with a bow to him. So you three made it right on time. I assume your mission was a success. Well, it was easy given the fact that the kid was stronger than you let on. Kagura said, We did warn you he would be a problem, said Kabuto. Yes, but nevertheless we could succeed in our mission, Mubi said, as he held out the bag he was carrying. Is that truly what I think it is, Urchimar asked, with a big grin on his face. That depends, do you have a reward? Aburo asked, of course, Kabuto. As Kabuto opened up a case revealing a generous fee. Alright, then we hand you off the head of Naruto Uzumaki and we will take our pay, Mubi said. Agreed, Urchimar said, as Mubi and Kabuto took the object of what each other had and brought to their own side. I guess we should be heading back to our village now, Kagari said. Hold on, said Kabuto. We have to check the good first. Agreed, said Mubi. Go ahead. As Kabuto reached and pulled out Naruto's severed head, that looked roughed up. Oh, Naruto, I wish I could see you getting decapitated, said Urchimaru. As the sun started to shine down a bit more as the clouds were parting, Urchimaru then looked at the rain ninja shadows and saw there was something up with them. Tell me, boys, how were you able to subdue Naruto like this, Urchimaru said, curiously. We use our illusion technique, and the blizzard that we were caught in helped a lot. Mubi said, notice Urchimaru's shift in behavior. I see, Urchimaru said. Many hidden shadow snakes as he launches snakes at them. Suddenly the shadows of the ninjas turn out to be Naruto, Jiraiya and a spirit clone. As the group jumped back. What happened, Mubi said as he shake his head. We were being manipulated, Kagari said. As Naruto turned to Jiraiya, well the technique was a partial success. Yeah, I wish you could have gotten a better drop on them though, Jeria said. Fakes, but what is? The head then exploded, blinding them for a few seconds. What do we do, Aburo asked. Grab our fee and run, Mubi said. But the money was pulled straight over Naruto who caught it, as he handed it to his clone. Take that back to the inn and return, Naruto said, as the clone flew off. Bring that back, Kagari said, but all of them were lifted up in the air. You three outlive your usefulness, Naruto said. As he twists his hand as their necks snap, as he thrusts their body off the bridge. Three down, Jiraiya said, as he looked towards Kabuto and Urshimaru emerge from the smoke. Very clever, Naruto and Jiraiya. But unfortunately, your plan was a failure, Urshimaru said. Not yet, it isn't, Naruto said. Naruto, you handle Kabuto. I got Urshimaru, Jiraiya said. Normally, I wouldn't take orders from you, seeing that I'm not your student anymore. But I had no time to argue, Naruto said, as both sides took off at each other. As Naruto sent Kabuto flying through the woods. As he landed gently, fancy seeing you around here, and not some things. Well, we thought about that, but we thought if the three managed to get their job done, we will simply just kill them and not pay them. But given the state of things, you took care of that job for us. So thank you, Naruto Kabuto said. I didn't do that for you or your sly ball of a master, Naruto said. Nevertheless, you saved us a problem. It's a shame. I have to kill you. You talk like you can kill me, Naruto said. You may have power, but you're not immortal, like Lord Urchimaru Kabuto said. Jumping from one meat suit to another, that's immortal? That's just him putting on another, younger set of clothes. Except the ugly is more the inside. Kabuto dashed towards Naruto. As both of them engaged in a bra until Naruto sent Kabuto crashing into a tree. You know Kabuto, you're a good medic, Nin. You ever thought about working with the teeth? Being a dentist or something like that, Naruto said. As Kabuto looked at him curiously, until Naruto started drag, as Kabuto cried out in pain, as Naruto ripped out his tooth one by one. With each tooth ripped out of his mouth, Kabuto cried out in pain and agony. Well Kabuto, you passed my dental exam, downside is, you won't be eating solid food again. And to make sure you don't try anything fresh, as he broke Kabuto's wrists, ankles, knees, shoulders, as Kabuto collapsed to the ground. Damn you, Naruto, Kabuto said, as he coughed up a mouthful of blood. Naruto clone then landed beside him. Stay here with him, he said. But I doubt he can move. But he's still a tricky bastard like his pedo of a master. As Naruto then went off to find Jiraiya and Urshimaru. As Naruto simply followed the path of pure destruction, as the both of them had took their fight in somewhere else. Finally found you, Naruto says he landed. Where is Kabuto, Urshimaru said. Oh, don't worry, he's alive. But he ain't gonna talk for a while now, Naruto said. And he's gonna be in extreme pain. You let the brat Urchmar growl. It's because of you I lost my vessel. All my plans are becoming 
the ultimate shinobi down the drain. Well, forgive me for not feeling guilty, Nurta said. How about feeling dead, Urchimaru said. Mandarian snake, neck formation, as he unleashed a torrent of snakes from his mouth that turned to a giant wave that came towards Nurta and Jiraiya. That's a lot of snakes, Nurta said, as all the snakes opened their mouths as blades extended from them. This is not good, Jiraiya said. Erosenin, go to a safe distance behind. What about you, Jiraiya said. I can handle these punks. Now go. As Nurta crossed his arms, Jiraiya jumped away. Jerry then saw a presence as the ground was shaking under Naruto and the pebbles were flying up in the air. Stones were lifting up, the ground was breaking apart. As the snakes then near him, Jerry held his breath. As Naruto released a psychic wave that tore through the ground and trees while tearing the snakes to shreds. Jerry had to jump down under safety. Even more, as Naruto wave spread out wide and tore everything apart, the trees were tumbled to pieces. All of Orchimaru's sneezes were obliterated. When Naruto finally powered down, he was standing in a giant crater that took up half of the forest, as the thing spread out rather wide. Orochimaru emerged from a pile of debris, as he was all beaten up as he got caught up in that attack. Such power! Perhaps he could be a replacement host. Orochimaru then opened his mouth as another Orochimaru crawled out of it, looking brand new without any bruise or scratch. This guy's really disgusting, said Krama. Yeah, said Naruto. I think it's time we put an end to him. Yeah, I agree with you, Krama said. As Nurta slammed his hands together and entered KCM mode. As Jerry watched in shock as he saw the coat came around Naruto and the lines all over him. Alright, Urchimaru. It's go time, Nurta said. As he moved at the speed of light, even faster than Hiroshin. As he was tearing through the sky straight towards Urchimaru. As his chakra arm started to form a Rasengan in his palm, a giant Rasengan. Orochimaru opened his mouth as he pulled his sword and thrust it towards Naruto. But Naruto blinked away and appeared right below his blade and smashed his Rasengan into Orochimaru's stomach. As Orochimaru was sent flying through the forest. As Orochimaru's body was being torn up by the Rasengan. As he then opened his mouth wide as something flew out. As Naruto turned to see Orochimaru's body crash, but something was behind him. As Naruto turned to see a giant white snake that looked rather demonic. Oh my god, Nurta said. You're really ugly. The giant white serpent launched towards Naruto. Nurta simply jumped back. As Jiraiya walked over, as he saw Nurta taunting the snake, seriously, he said, You're way too slow. Food cart. Destruction technique. As Nurta looked up to see, the giant toad from Mount Miyamoku dropped right on Urchimaru, crushing him under it. Awesome, Nurta said. But the ground didn't shake as Urchimaru emerged from another area. Kurama, you ready, Nurta said. Yeah, it's been a while since I was let loose. As Nurta slammed his hand together, Jerry and Gamahi were watching in shock. Even Urchimaru was in shock as the giant form of the fox manifested out of Nurta chakra. As Urchimaru dashed towards him as he wrapped around Kurama's body. As Kurama simply looked down at him. As Kurama's body then started to bubble as the snake hissed out in pain. As Nurta leaped out of Kurama mode. As he had a giant Rasengan in his hand. As he smashed the Rasengan right into the serpent's face. Orochimaru was sent sailing as he crashed into the ground a boom. That was the worst beer hug I could ever ask for, said Grandma. You never asked for a beer hug anyway, Nurta said. Jiraiya trapped him, Nurta said. As Jiraiya ran through Hansign, swamp of the underworld. As a swamp appeared under Orochimaru. As he was starting to be pulled underneath. Now you and Gamma Hero get the hell out of here. This one. It's going to be big, Nurta said, as he hopped back into Kurama. As Nurta held up both of his hands as Kurama started to build a Biju bomb. Now die, you disgusting snake freak, Nurta said. Biju bomb, him and Kurama voice said at the same time. As a massive bomb teared through the ground and smashed right into Urchimaru. As a loud explosion followed by a huge backlash went off. That was awesome, Nurta said. As he entered out of Kurama chakra form, Kurama raised his fist and so did Naruto the both of them face bump. Make sure to let me out again next time to have some fun. Sure thing, Naruto said. As Kurama receded back into the seal, as Gamma Hero was sent back home, as Jerry looked at Naruto a blank look on his face, Naruto. Oh, oh, as Jerry couldn't even talk. We did it, Erosani, Naruto said. Y yeah, Jerry said. You better get to my clone and Kabuto. As they headed off, someone then broke from the ground. It was 
Zetsu. Well, isn't this intriguing, said White Zetsu. We must inform the leader about this. The kid has become surely dangerous, Black Zetsu said. As the, they came up on the side to see Kabuto unconscious, what did you do not to ask? Well, the guy was just talking and talking and mumbling his words. So I tore the rest of his tooth out, said the clone, and he passed out from blood loss. As Jeria winced, that must be painful. But he then looked at Naruto, well, good job. Urchimaru is gone, and now we have Kabuto. When or if he wakes up, will you be able to find out more about Akasuke from his mind? As Jiraiya summoned a toad, take Kabuto back to Konoha and hand him over to the interrogation corps. As the toad nod then poofed away. Well, Erosani Nerda said, we destroy Urchimaru and capture Kabuto. What now? Like you need to ask, Jiraiya said. We celebrate! As both of them are now in the bar, as Jiraiya popped the top of her champagne. I like that, Nerda said, as Jiraiya poured some sake into his saucer. This was a great success. We stop Orochimaru and we end up getting Rain Ninja payment, said Jiraiya. And we're going to share it 50-50, Nerka said, as he know how stingy Jiraiya could be with money. Especially that time when he took his savings, when they were looking for Snadi. Yeah, yeah, said Jiraiya. So what are you going to do after this, he asked. Well, I'm going to fly out to beach country and have some fun in the sun. I'm going to have some downtime after his victory. I see. Hope you see a lot of good looking girls there. And if it's possible, bring me back some data, Jiraiya said. The pervert it's Mark. As Nerta chuckled, of course Erosenin. That's my godson, said Jiraiya as he patted Nerta on the back. Seiko then approach. Don't forget Mr. Utsumaki, you have an appointment tonight. As she wink. Right, right, Nerta said. As she walked off, walking in a rather sultry manner. Well kid, it looks like you're gonna have some fun tonight, said Jiraiya. Later that night in a cave, the silhouette of the Akaski members were there. I know Sorcery, who was switched with Toby. So what is this emergency meeting about, Akisame? I have news from Zetsu regarding our former comrade or tomorrow, Payne said. What about him, Kakazu asked. He's dead. What? He's actually dead, said Kisame. Who killed him? It was Uzumaki Naruto. The members minus Itachi share a look of disbelief as they are a growl. Damn it, I want to kill that snake freak. It was an intense battle but he did not do it by himself. Jiraiya, of the sun he had a part in it as well. But... The troublesome thing is, the boy has full control over the Kayube. He could prove impossible for one of us to take him on alone. You give that brat too much credit, Zetsu, said Hidan. Hey, if you recall, he literally ripped my arms off by just spreading his arms out. Said Deira, and in nuke, me and Itachi stand in with little effort, Kisame said. Oh dear, when you put it that way, I'm glad we don't have to go after him until we collect the others, Toby said. There is still a problem with that, Itachi said. When they went to capture Gara, Nerta immediately show up. I think he is on to us. How? Does he have his own spy network? Later asked. I highly doubt that, Kisame said. Whatever the case, we need to be on high alert. If he was able to show up when Gara was being abducted, it might be the same for the other Chinjulikis. And if he was able to eliminate our tomorrow, there's an off chance that he can eliminate any of us if we're careless, said Conan. Hey, he thought he had me, but I survived, Later said. By a wimp. Oops, did I say it out loud, Toby asked. Toby, I'm gonna kill you, Deidre said. Knock it off. It pain, he done, Takazu. You two are going after Nimijin Julke. How far are you in your progress? We're almost there, said he done. But why the hell did you partner me up with this guy? All he does is care about money. And I hate people like that, he done said. You act like you're a prize either, said Takazu. What was that, he done curse? Silence, said pain. We will report in if more develops. Until then you all know your job. And with that he vanished. Time skip. The day had been a beautiful day for Naruto. Not only weather wise. No, it was absolutely great. After defeated Orchimaru he felt like a great weight was lifted off of him. As he was flying through the sky and enjoying himself. As he was distracted. Flying around and enjoying himself. Naruto in front of you Kurama said. As Naruto collided into a flock of seagulls. As he had to fight off the birds in the skies, as they started to attack him, as Naruto blew away the birds, and they all looked at him with a menacing look. Krama, did you see that? Naruto said. Hmm, it seems like they're going to plan revenge on you, said Krama. As the birds gave Naruto a strange glare that only a human could give, and with that they flew off dangerously. As Naruto just watched them, as they were just glaring at him until they left out of sight. Ah, oh, finally Naruto said I've made it. As he went down, the beach country. After checking in, 
feet. Went to unpack. I can't wait to get down to the beach, he said, as he pulled out his black and red trunks with their matching flip flops. Maybe if I'm lucky, I'll make a tan, he said. Be careful, Naruto, or you will burn, Kram said. I'll worry about that, Nurse says he got changed. Soon he was dressed in his trunk and his flip flops and his glasses. As he walked out, it was absolutely the perfect day to be here, with a warm breeze blowing through the area and the sun just at the perfect level of heat, not so hot and yet not that almost gone to make the place extremely cold. As he walked, he saw multiple couples and people enjoying multiple activities. This would be a lot much better if I had someone to share it with, he said. Naruto, a voice said, as he turned as someone crashed into him. Naruto, as he looked up, Ciao, he said. Who else, she said, as she was in a tight black bikini, a two-piece. Wow, this is unexpected, Naruto said. Likewise, she said. Are you here by yourself, he asked. No, my mother is here with me. Well, where's Minsu, Naruto said. But Naruto got his answer as he felt two arms wrapped around him and two large breasts. You call Naruto, Minsu said in a flirtatious voice. Naruto smiled, Minsu, I know you wouldn't be too far behind. As Naruto instantly got a nosebleed as he turned, as she was wearing a perfect bikini but the top was so small it could barely contain her large bosom. As she saw him looking at her and the nosebleed, you like what you see, she said, as she winked and blew him a kiss. Having been through this more than once, he still couldn't keep calm. Oh yeah, I love what I'm looking at, he said. But guys, it'll be any steps right here. If you want to make part of this or know what to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn the bell notification as they both said. And remember, cheers to all of your friends via social media platform. And also, stay tuned for the rest of what is coming your way. But for now, I'm out of here. See you guys soon. Peace. Oh yeah, stay in tune for What If Naruto was Osusuke King. And I'm also going to be posting a brand new episode of What If Naruto is a Deceitful God on this channel. And What If Naruto is a Badass Genius over an Anime King. Yeah, I'm out now. See you guys. Peace.